Hey everyone, so for this project, um, we're making a mini album that's going to sit on this cute little wagon. And I actually ordered this from Amazon. It's just a little wooden um, covered wagon. I didn't use the top, so I just put it together and then covered it up with some papers. Uh, apparently, people have seen these at the dollar store. I haven't, but Anyways, we'll just start with that and just want to show you that. But the album, and you don't need this to make the album. I just am using this because I'm going to put it on display on the mantle. Um, but the album we're making today is going to use Chao Bella's Northern Lights collection. So I just want to show you the paper real quick. So first off, for the album itself, we're going to use this 110 pound craft cardstock. And then to decorate, like I said, we're using the Chao Bella Northern Lights. So I have here the six by six pad, and then I also have the 12 by 12. Um, they call it a paper pad. It's not actually a pad, it's their collection kit, but they have two. This is the main one, and then they have a patterns, which I didn't pick up. Um, but anyways, this is, oops, upside down, but we've got like lots of cute little snowmen and Christmas patterns, so, um, this fits really well with the theme and then I'm going to use a few sheets from the 12 by 12 here as well which just is the same except larger larger patterns okay and then um, I will use a couple of sheets of wood grain paper so if you have some wood grain um, this is from Simple Stories Snap Basics, but really any kind of wood grain paper for background that you have would work here too. Or um, in the collection kit itself, there are actually a few pieces that have wood grain, so you may not um, need to get any extra, depending on how you like to decorate. You don't have to decorate exactly the same as I am, but I'm just showing you all the materials that I'll be using for this little book. Okay, so we're gonna get started constructing the base of the album. So I have my 110 pound cardstock, my scoreboard, and my paper trimmer. Um, just a note, if this is your first time watching one of my tutorials, my process is this. We cut, score, and stick the pieces together as we go. So I know some tutorials cut all the pieces and then label them and then go back and put them all together. We don't do it that way. I find that a little bit confusing, um, especially if you're not doing the project all at once. So what I like to do is just cut and glue um, and progress as we go. So that's the first note. The second thing that might be helpful is when I read out my measurements to you, they're always in height by width of the album. Okay, so I think we can go ahead and get started. So first thing we're gonna do is cut the, um, the cover pieces. So you're going to actually need um, four pieces for the cover. So the first piece will be the, um, the front flap that folds over the front of the album. So this is going to measure seven and three quarters by six and a quarter. So we can go ahead and cut that. Seven and three quarters by six and one quarter. Okay, and so I'm going to score now at half and one and three quarters. So where are we scoring? We want to put the long side, so the seven and three quarter side will go along the top of your scoreboard, okay? And then you're gonna score at half, half, and then again at one and three quarters. Okay, so what we've done here is we've made a, um, a one and a quarter inch spine okay and I want it to be one and a quarter inch because I want it to fit in my little wagon here and it's going to fit just perfectly and it's got a little bit a little bit of space too if it expands a bit when I put my pictures in okay so it's gonna set that down so we're just going to set that aside for a second Okay, now let's do the back of the album. So this piece is going to be seven by six and a quarter. Okay, so you'll notice my width is always six and a quarter because that's um, basically the width of the album. So seven by six and a quarter. And I don't need to score anything on this because this is going to the back of the album. So we are going to eventually just attach this here. 
And then I'm going to do the bottom flap of the album, which is six and three quarters. by six and one quarter. Okay, now this piece we do need to score. So I'm going to line up my six and three quarter side along the top of the scoreboard, and I'm gonna score again at half and one and three quarters. So half and one and three quarters. Okay, and let's just all right so now I've got my basic cover pieces so I have the back of the album I have the front flap and I have the bottom flap, and it's going to sit like this when it's finished. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna put these together right now. So just go ahead and grab your score tape. And let's put, so we have the back of the album here. Remember, it's six and a quarter wide and it's seven inches tall, okay? So make sure you orient that the right way. And we can go ahead and attach the bottom flap here. Um, and so just one of the ways, and I think I've seen this in other tutorials as well, but just a way to kind of control this because the um, score tape is quite sticky and you want to make sure everything's nice and lined up is just peel back a corner and then just pull after you line up the, where, where you're, this piece you're attaching, just slowly pull the score tape back. Okay. And just a reminder, if this is your first album, when you are attaching pieces, don't go right up to the score mark. Like don't cover up the score mark. You want to be able to see the score mark. That way when you're folding, it actually folds neatly. Otherwise, if you cover up or go on top of the score mark, you won't get a fold there. It's not the end of the world if you do that. You can always go back and burnish it down. But this is uh, this is what you should aim for. Okay, let's attach the, the top piece now. Okay, and well, I didn't do my little trick, but that's okay. We'll manage here, there we go. All right, so there we go. So we've got so far the um, cover of the album constructed, okay? Now, on what, if you recall, that there's a flap that sticks out from the top here. So we're gonna go ahead um, and attach that now as well. So this one, you're going to measure six and a half by six and a quarter. So I'll just set this aside. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and score this at half an inch. So you're going to run your six and a half inch edge along the top of your scoreboard, score this at half an inch, and this is where we're going to attach it to the top flap. Okay, so we will go ahead and attach that now. So you'll notice I'm putting this score tape on the inside of the fold. It doesn't matter so much where you put it um, because I'm sticking it on, on the outside like this so that then I will cover this up with paper and you won't see it. If you prefer, you can do it this way. The only reason I don't like to do it this way is it's just, um, I feel like it leaves this edge open. So if you open and close it enough, there'll be uh, that that will wear down over time, which we don't want. 
All right, so now I'm just attaching this. Um, I'm going to be attaching this here to the top edge. Okay, great. So here's what we have so far. Okay, our album is going to have a front flap open up this way, then there'll be a flap here that opens up and then there's your bottom. Okay, so next thing we're going to work on the inside left flap that comes out from this side. Okay, so this inside flap is going to measure seven by seven and one eighth. So there's my seven and seven and one eighth by seven. Okay, and so my seven inch side is the height of the book here. Okay, so what I want to do is I want, this is gonna be a flap that comes open here, so I need to score. And because there's going to be a waterfall inside, I'm going to make about a half inch spine on this too. So we're gonna take this piece and you're gonna put your seven inch, um, sorry, seven and one eighth of an inch side across the top of your scoreboard. And then I want you to score this at half and then at one. Okay. Right, so we can go ahead and fold these over and attach this piece as well. So, so I'm attaching this to the base back of the album. So that's this piece here. Okay, and it's going to go attached just like so. And again, I'm putting my score tape on the inside of the fold here. Let me just peel that back. And then we can line up page here. There we go. Okay, so that's gonna fold here like so. Um, and then I need a little closure, please, because I want this um, to stay shut here. So let's just move this aside. Okay, so my little closure piece is going to measure two and a quarter by four inches. So I'm just checking to see if I can use one of my scraps. So this is two and a quarter. four okay and we're just going to um, score this now at half and at one okay and we're going to go ahead and attach this as well So this is going to be used to keep this flap shut. So it's going over here um, and somewhere close to the middle, just center it. I just eyeball it. You can definitely measure if you like. There we go. So that will keep this section nicely, tidily closed. Okay, so now let's work on the section over here, which is, if you remember, it's a fold down flap with a top tab. So the fold down tab, it, 
And the fold down um, piece of it is gonna measure six and five eighths by six and one eighth. So let's see if any of these qualify my scraps. So I need six and one eighth. by six and five eighths. Perfect. Okay, and so I'll bring the base back just so we can see where this is going to attach. So this attaches from the bottom of this flap that we just attached right here. Okay, so I need to score along here to attach this. So I'm going to line up uh, my sixth and five eighths length across the top and I'm going to score at half. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and attach this. And so this is what I mean about just cutting and attaching as we go and just kind of getting the pieces out of the way. So this will go right along the bottom edge of that inside flap. Now make sure you're lined up here. Okay, before you pull this out. There we go. There's that flap, okay. Um, See, I made a little mistake because I wasn't really paying too close of attention. So how can you fix that? You can either pull this off and re-stick it in, or if it's just a tiny error, slightly off, you can just pull it back and then burnish down this edge. There you go. Okay, so that's that works too. Okay, so now I wanna make the tab that will hold this part down. So this I'm going to measure at three and three quarters by three and one quarter. So that's three and three quarters by three and one quarter. And so the reason I'm cutting it this size is I actually already know um, the piece I'm gonna to use to decorate this with and it's from the six by six pad and it's one of these little three by three squares. So that's why I've chosen that size. So if you are using different paper, um, one of the things you might wanna do is check out how you're going to um, decorate these tabs and then make them to the size that suits you. The only thing you have to remember is that if there's going to be a magnet closure here, you wanna make it long enough so that you have room to put your magnet um, far from um, this edge here and far from this edge too because you don't want your magnets too close to the edge. Okay, so enough about that. We're going to just score this here at half an inch so we can attach it. So I'm scoring it here. I put the three and three quarter inch side along the top and I scored on the shorter side and we're gonna attach this right here. And once again, about the center, make sure you're right up at the edge of the top. Measure it if you like. I just eyeball it and I find that works for me. Okay, so here is where we are so far. Okay, we've done. We've done the outside cover, top flap, bottom flap. This opens up. We open up this way. Okay, then once we're inside, we have a waterfall on the back of the page and a pocket. So let us, um, let's start with the waterfall first. So for the waterfall, we're going to have four cards and they're going to measure six and one eighth by, uh, so sorry, I'm giving you the measurements backwards. They're going to measure four and a half uh, by six and one eighth. So four and a half by six and one eighth. So let's go ahead and get those cut. Okay, so I'm gonna cut one 
and attach it and then I'm gonna go away and cut the rest of them and when we come back we will attach them all into the waterfall and I can show you how we do that so let's just cut one for now and then you can go off and do the rest um, and come back to the video to see them being put into the book so I am getting to measure four and a half so I'm trying to use up my scraps so we've got this is four and a half by six and one eighth so not a quarter but rather one eighth okay and I'm attaching these to the along sorry I'm attaching these along this side so I need to score here at half okay and I'm going to Score tape on here. Okay, so there's one finished, and I'll show you where we're attaching these. So these will just be going right up here, and so the first one starts right at the very top edge. So here for the waterfall, I find this technique actually really important because you want to line it up and you want to check that it's lined up down the sides as well because you want all your flaps of the waterfall to be nice and even. Okay. So there's the first waterfall in. Okay, so um, I'm gonna just pause now and go and make three more of these and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back and I've already installed three of the waterfalls. Remember we're putting in four, so I just have one left to put in. So I just wanted to show you my um, approach to putting this in. So I fold back the corner like I showed you earlier and I line these up. And um, before I stick it in, I just make sure that everything is lined up on the edges with the tab with the flap from before just so they're all nice and lined up and that's it okay so that's how our waterfall will sit so um, the next piece we're going to make is the pocket that's down here at the bottom so this pocket's uh, fairly straightforward it's just three um, three inches by seven inches and then you score it at half an inch on three sides so let's just see if there's some scraps I can use. Okay, so we're going to measure three inches tall. By seven inches wide. Okay, and now go ahead and score that on your three sides. So, and your three sides are the two short sides and one long side. Just to be clear, I'm sure you know that, but it doesn't hurt to say it again. Okay, so just score those like that. So what I do here is I cut off the corners just so I can eliminate some of the bulk when I fold the flaps down. So you can just cut diagonally across those little corners and get to my score tape. So I ran out of my uh, 3 8 of an inch score tape, which is a bit of a travesty. So I'm using half an inch. It's a little bit wider than I like. So I don't really recommend it, but I have to use it because I've accidentally bought a whole bunch of it. So I do have the quarter inch score tape so that if I have to switch over, um, if I have some pieces where I don't to, uh, like the way this is working, I'll just use the thinner one, maybe even add in some of my um, art glitter glue. But anyway, so far I think I can make this work. Now, I missed a little spot up here. So after I peel this, sorry, actually, before we go any further, let's just fold the corners. Let's just fold these down. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm gonna peel this back. I missed a little spot here, so I'm gonna just go in with the little leftover piece of score tape. Okay, so when the score tape is too wide, you kind of have to make sure you fold it back. So, especially for the pocket, if I let this sit on this cover, it is just going to get caught with whatever I put in the pocket. So I'm just folding this back. And I'm gonna to switch to my uh, quarter inch score tape in a second. Okay, but there you go. This is how you improvise when you're a scrapbooker. Okay, so I bring my album back and my back pocket is going to be stuck to the back of the album at the bottom. Okay, so I'm just going to fold these back and you can actually, um, and there we go. So I didn't quite center this. And so I'm going to just see if I can move it over. And I think, you know, when this happens, I think to myself, should I redo this section of the video? And then I think, no, because this is the stuff that happens to people <laughs> while they're making an album. So how do you fix it? So um, I know I'm covering all of this up with paper, so I'm, I'm not being too fussy, but I really want this pocket centered on this back page. So I'm just pulled it out. And there we go. Let's back in. You can always reinforce it with some glue when you do something like that. I didn't rip up too much of the um, of the bottom layer, so it's fine. All right, so there's the pocket and the waterfall that sits on top of it. Okay, and now I'm going to need a flap to keep this waterfall closed as well because we don't want this just sort of um, flipping open. So this flap is going to sit uh, just on top of this pocket. And so for this flap, you're going to measure a piece of um, cardstock at two and a quarter by five. Okay, and then you're going to score this at half. go and we're just going to attach this now So you're going to attach this down at the center of your pocket, right along the bottom edge. And that will keep your waterfall nice and closed. Okay, so we're actually finished this middle section. So that will sit together like this. All right, so the next piece we're gonna work on um, is this sort of top fold out section. So I'm going to have um, the fussy cut section here and then I have a pull out kind of flip out album up here. So let's work on the fussy cut section um, over here first. But for this, you will actually need to decide what your patterned paper is going to be um, because you're going to attach the fussy cut pieces here. After you choose your paper, you're going to cut stick stick your patterned paper onto your cardstock, fussy cut around it, and then stick it into the book. Okay. Okay. So where we left off was that we are going to figure out what fussy cut paper we we're going to use for this um, section right here. So I went ahead and did that. I chose this paper um, with the Northern Lights and um, the Snowmen. So this is from the six by six pack, and this is 
from the 12 by 12 pack. If you only have one, I think you can um, actually recreate this very closely using the 12 by 12 pack. So what I did was I cut um, a piece of patterned paper and this is the wood grain and I matted it. I used it as a mat for the six by six piece. Then I fussy cut these snowmen out of the 12 by 12 and I attached them onto a piece of the um, 110 pound cardstock and I fussy cut, well actually then I glued this to the back and then I fussy cut around the entire um, the entire piece, okay? I also, oops, left a half inch margin here and I attached it to the back of this card because this is going to be glued down right here. So I just wanna show you how I did that. If you don't wanna go through that, that's okay. Um, you can just decorate this plainly. You don't need to have this flap out here. You can just, at the end, um, just put some card, some patterned paper that you like right here, but that's how I chose to do this. So um, I wanted to show you that. Okay, so now I'm gonna just show you how to do the final section, which is the inside. So the inside of the top cover, which will have a fold out section here. So let's cut our pieces first and it will all come together. So you're going to cut two pieces that measure nine and three quarters by four and a half. So nine and three quarters by four and a half. And one more nine and three quarters four and a half. There we go. Okay, so now you're going to score this um, at like I said, half a quarter and then also at five and a quarter. Okay, so what that should do is give you two equal sections and a binding piece to attach to. So let's just fold those in half. There we go. Okay, and the second piece that we cut, we're just gonna score this at three quarters. We don't want a binding on it, we just need a place to attach it. So we're scoring this at three quarters and again at five and a quarter. There we go. Okay, so let's put this to get together before we attach it to the inside cover of the book. So I'm just going to attach this piece here. can just sort of fold it how you like if you like it to be folded um, sort of accordion style in and out it's up to you but this piece now is going to get attached to the inside cover at the top like so okay so we're going to put some score tape along this top edge here Stick this to the very top edge and in the center. There we go. So you can see I have a little spine here. And then I can fold this. You, uh, you can decide how you want to fold this in and out or what have you. I'm going to tuck it all actually all in. So I'm going to I'm going to fold first card in, second card out and third card in and there we go 
okay? So now I wanna hold this shut, so I'm just gonna make a little closure flap for the, right here. So let's just set that aside and show you how to do that. Okay, so for the closure flap piece, you're going to measure a piece, hopefully from um, your scraps. You can find a piece that is four by four. So I'm going to cut mine here at four. And this looks like it's four. Yep, so there's my four by four piece. And I'm gonna just score this at half an inch. And at three quarters of an inch because I want the spine of this to match to be just as thick as this side. Okay, so I'm gonna just burnish that down and we'll attach this piece. And we're actually done constructing the base of the book. So next I'm going to show you where we will put our magnets. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring my book back. And I've just peeled off a corner because I wanna make sure I center this more or less and center it based on your um, top flap, make sure it's sort of equidistant from the edges here. And if you centered that, then this should be centered on the piece beneath it as well. There we go. Perfect. Okay, let's just do a quick run through so you can see um, where this album, where we are with the album, what your finished product should look like, and then we'll start with the magnets. So, it is a standing, it's going to stand in my wagon. Um, you don't have to put it in a wagon if you don't want to, but it will open up in the top. This flap will come open, and then we have this fold out here. Okay. Then we have the bottom flips open, and we have this middle section where we open up, and we've got a few things here. We've got a waterfall section, with a pocket, okay? And then this opens up. We have lots of space for pictures here. So I'm gonna close up this middle section again. And back to our top section, this opens up and we have these two sections here. And remember for this section, I had this piece that I fussy cut. So that's where I'm going to put that when I do my decorating. So I'm just set that aside for now. Okay, and so let's take a look at where we're gonna put our magnets. Okay, so I try to minimize my magnet use because it can get pretty expensive, plus there's other cute little ways to keep sections closed that I'm gonna show you. So I only used um, three magnets in this and I'm using some other techniques to keep other sections shut. So my first magnet is to keep the whole thing closed. So it's right here. I'm just gonna, I have to be a bit careful because they're not covered in paper yet. Here we go. So my first magnet placement is on the inside bottom of the front cover. And I've touched the other one to this um, fold out piece at the top. Okay, so that will keep the entire album shut. Okay, um, the second magnet I used is here to keep this section closed up. Okay. And then I'm going to use a different technique here where I'll be attaching this with a brad and you'll be able to slide it open to open this section. So I'll show you that when I'm decorating. So there's no magnet here. Um, I'm going to do the same, something similar here again, where you'll be able to slide it open. So no magnet required over here, but I did use one little magnet uh, for the waterfall. So just a tip, when you're placing your magnets, try to place them at least half an inch from the edge, if not more, just so you don't get to bump. And that's it, so that's pretty simple on the magnet placement. Okay, so I thought I would actually, since I showed you magnet closures, now I'm going to show you how to do this other type of closure that I like that doesn't require magnets. So the first place I'm going to do this is in this section here, in the middle section that opens up. So I wanna hold this shut without using a magnet. So I'm going to use this. And so the way this is going to work is I'm going to attach this with a brad to this patterned paper before I glue it all down. 
So I just want to make sure of the proper placement to hold this shut because you need it to be close enough, but you need to be able to swing out of the way and release that flap. So that looks like it would work about here. And I love it because it's kind of, you know, it's right in the center of the page. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I have my little memory makers kit, or you can just use a needle, but I have this little sharp tool. So I'm going to just lay everything down as it will be on the page and sort of center this. And I'm, I want my brad to be right over here. So I'm just gonna gently poke a hole and not go too, too far. And now I'm gonna slide this out. So I know the placement, it's going to be here. And I'm just gonna poke a hole right through to the other side, through the patterned paper, okay? And so then we're gonna take a brad. So I'm just using these little sort of matte metal brads. And you're gonna push the brad through. And there we go. So this now will move on that brad. So I can go ahead and glue this decorative um, patterned paper down here. So let's do that so you can see how this looks when it's all finished. Time for some more glue. Okay, got that down. And so I'm gonna slide this out of the way. And that's how this section will stay closed. So that's pretty neat. Um, what I did, this is actually fussy cut from the 12 by 12, and then I mounted it onto a piece of heavy cardstock just so it was a little bit thicker. So that's that. Okay, guys, before we do a final walkthrough, and you'll see that I've decorated the album, um, I'm going to show you one last decorating tip, and that is how to install this diagonal belly band. So I want to put a belly band here so that I can, you know, tuck some photos under under this onto this side so the easiest way to do that is to um, just grab the piece of paper that you want to make the belly band out of and because it's diagonal we need to actually cut diagonally in straight lines so this sort of fits here so first thing we're going to do is cut the belly band to the width that you'd like it to be so this is a little bit too wide so I want my belly band to be uh, maybe about an inch, about an inch wide, okay? And I want to position it about like that so I can tuck the pictures under. All right, so here's how you do this. Take your belly band and place it down, actually place it upside down because you're going to mark it out where you'd like it to go. Now notice something here. The edge of my belly band is hanging off the sides, okay? Don't put it like this. Like I need to be able to, I need the edges to reach past the sides because we're going to cut along here and along here and attach the belly band, okay? So I hope that makes sense. So position your belly band with a little bit of the edge coming off the sides of your page you're attaching it to. And then grab your ruler and just go right up to the edge of the backing that you're attaching the belly band to and draw a straight line, okay? We're gonna do the same thing on this side, okay? We're going to get the ruler right up to the edge here, like so, okay? And you're just going to mark out a straight line 
Okay, so now I know where I am cutting. All right, so I you can use your paper cutter or you can just use your fussy cutting scissors and cut along the edge. I find this is a bit easier. So I'm just cutting along where I marked out in pen and you should have a perfectly fitting corner belly band like that. Okay, so that is pretty easy. I've seen some other methods. Um, Anyway, this way it's always going to get you a nice straight line and it'll always be lined up. So you're just going to put some glue on the edges and then go ahead and position that down. Okay. And usually I just sort of push in just a little so I have a bit more space. It's up to you. It, it depends what you think you're gonna, how much you're gonna put in there, but you definitely wanna have a little bit of space. But even if you only wanna tuck in like say one photo, example, okay. Or there's another, so perfect. So I can put a bunch of little pictures in here or embellishments. Hey guys, so I'm gonna show you the album in its finished state. So. First thing is I made this little wagon from a kit that I got from Amazon. The company is called Derice and um, I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but I know some people will ask where the wagon's from. It's just a little wooden kit you put together and then I covered it in some patterned papers and just chalked and chalking the wheels to make them darker. And the reason I did this is the album's just going to sit in there. Okay. And it's actually going to sit on my mantle. And I just thought that looked really cute for the holidays. So I'm going to set that aside because this is an album walkthrough and not a wagon walkthrough. So this is the finished product. It is seven by six and a quarter uh, size and it's about uh, one and a quarter inches thick. And it's this sort of box style, box style album. So let's take a look at the front cover. So for the front cover, I took one of the large pattern sheets from the 12 by 12 kit and I just cut out some extra pieces that I popped up for some dimension and added some sparkles here, if you can see those. And then this is just a piece of holly berry that I had left over from a Prima kit, but it seemed to go perfectly there. And I left the rest plain because I think there's just plenty going on on the front and I like sort of the brown kind of wooden look. All right, so let's open this up and see what's going on inside. So let's start with the bottom section. So the bottom section folds out. And so the first thing you'll see down here is a belly band. So you can put pictures, photos in there. And then we get to this middle section. So the middle section, um, and I show you how to do this in the tutorial, but instead of using a magnet, sometimes I like to use these brads and sort of these interactive movement of pieces. So this um, opens up by just sliding out of the way and then you can open up the flap. And so here's the inside. So we have a couple of things happening here. So down here in the center, we have a waterfall. So it's just four, four pages, four tab waterfall, but perfect for your four by sixes. And then we've got a little pocket here for extra photos. Okay, and there's a magnet here holding that shut. And then on this side, I did the same thing as on the outside with the brad. So this slides out of the way and that flap pops open. And then we have space in here for photos as well. So down here, I just added this little card and I only glued it on the two sides so that you can slide photos in and out of there as well. Okay, so let's just close up this center section. And now we can move on to the top. So the top section um, is a couple of flaps and folds here as well. So this opens up and I just fussy cut around the snow globe here. And then so we've got this sort of pull out section. I'm going to turn it sideways so you can see it all. So I left this, what, some of this paper is so gorgeous. Like there's a few places in here where I just left the paper. There's no room for pictures, but it's just for decorative purposes. But I love the snowman and the way that looks. Um, so this opens up into four flaps, so you get lots of room for pictures. This is just glued on onto one side so that if you want to tuck a picture under there, you can. And then, of course, 
onto the other side as well. Okay, so we can just close that up. There's a magnet here, and all this is in the tutorial, um, magnet placement and everything. Then this opens up to the top, so you have space for photos here. And now this is again a fussy cut from one of the 12 by 12 sheets. So this is the Northern Lights page, which I loved so much and I wanted to incorporate um, as much of it as I could, even though it's only a six by seven album. The way to do it is just fussy cutting around some of the images. So this just opens up and then we have room for photos and journaling in here. So that's basically it. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this and you take a look at the tutorial and let me know if you made it, how did it turn out? Thanks very much.